second hot topic talks about the challenges facing public varsity students in Nigeria. Now, higher ed education in Nigeria faces significant challenges such as inadequate funding, poor infrastructure, low academic remuneration, outdated curricula, bureaucracy, and insecurity. Now, these issues stem from a weak leadership and policies leading to brain drain, dilapidated infrastructure, and unemployable graduates. Radical reforms, including significantly increasing budgetary allocation and improving academic staff welfare, are necessary. Both state and federal governments must, must ensure continuous professional development for lecturers who need to update their knowledge and teaching materials to remain effective. Now, joining us to have a conversation on such challenges is Organe Yoreme Michael J. He's a career specialist and CEO ANGUNG. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Plus TV. Good morning, Nigerians. All right. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about some of the challenges. Can you give us some challenges? I mean, I've mentioned a few, um, such as inadequate infrastructure, poor infrastructure. We're looking at um, not enough resources um, that are happening or that are facing our university students. Well, what are some challenges that you think our, our students are facing right now in Nigeria? Uh, if you are talking about infrastructure that are inadequate, it has always been there. Inadequate infrastructure has always been there. Inadequate funding, it has always and always been there. Uh, if you look at the recommendation from the UN, 26% of uh, 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 national budget for education, Nigeria has never met up to that status at any point since onset, since 1960. So if you are looking at the government part of it, it is never going to be adequate. Uh, that's why we have a, a, a third fund. We have several educational institutions that were established to ensure they give support to, uh, to university infrastructure. Uh, but nonetheless, if you look at where we are, where we have been till this, this very moment, uh, there have been significant development. When you go to universities, you see building structures that were funded by either Ted Fund or NDDC or any other educational uh, bodies. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I think I, I, I got myself prepared from the student's point of view when you talk about challenges facing uh, university students. Because you said university students are not universities in general. So I, I want to take it from the angle of the students and not from the university, not from the management, not from the government body. I don't know if that is permitted. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So when we want to take it from the, from the student's point of view, I want to classify uh, it into three categories from where we are going to ride along. Uh, now we have the post-secondary school challenges, which is also the pre-university environment. Mm. Now, so many parents and their candidates do not prepare themselves financially for the academic cost ahead. So when some of them gain admission, they come to the office, you give them the list of school fees and clearance and acceptance, they tell you, how come the school fees is so costly? And I was like, okay, when you were choosing JAM form or choosing the university during JAM registration, you didn't check how much the school fees is. So now you are checking how much it is. So unfortunately, some of these parents and their students, they quit at that instance. So inadequate preparation for university expenses is a problem in the university environment. We have name issues among students, among candidates. Most of them imported foreign names into their government official name. So uh, during my time, you would have seen my name as Julius Michael Ogene Yereme at Jai Crowder, because the Crowder is all over my head. So those fanciful lives were also imported into their documents. So when they come to the university, the university is unable to confirm that the name on the admission is the same name on the, the, the old level uh, that is being used to back the admission, so they forfeit admission. So inadequate understanding of how names should be aligned in documents also constitutes a challenge to Nigerian universities. And a lot of persons are forfeiting the admission in the university environment. The same thing also happened with local government of origin, where people, uh, students use their parents' local government to gain admission. But by the time they come to the school environment, it is their mother's state of origin. And what happens then? 
you realize that their pain is as non-indigenous instead of indigenous. That is a very big challenge. And also age and otherwise. That is the pre-university stage. Now let's come to the university environment. There are a whole lot of challenges that students are facing. Student challenges that has to do with scam. A lot of schools now, they no longer accept school fees as bank deposit. Rather, you go to a cafe and you pay your school fees and you process the school fees on in the cafe. Now, a lot of trustees that have been handed fees to and other charges, some of them use the fees for personal life, some of them play gamble and the rest. And at the end of the day, somebody you entrusted your fees to is using the school fees for another purpose. So this is a very big challenge and a lot of students are losing their school fees to this. Also part of this is scam, uh, sorry, is gamble. A lot of students are using their school fees to play gamble. Some of them are using their school fees to, uh, how do I put it, to, uh, to do types and offering in churches. And at the end of the day, when they come to school, they are unable to meet up because they were promised that when they use the school fees to do tithes and offering, God will send more blessings to them. So recently we have an MBB student, an MBS student, they are writing their MB exam just uh, June. Yeah? Yes, it was June. And uh, among the students that were sitting for the MB exam, uh, most of them were unable to pay their fees. So the class were contributing money to ensure they pay their fees because people in medicine they understand how important MP exam is. But one of them, when he was asked what happened that he couldn't pay the fees, he said he used the school fees for tight. And he actually got very angry and walked out, out of the class. And the class did not even bother to contribute money for her. This is just something that happened in, uh, in June, June 2024. So a lot of uh, gambling is going on in the university that is affecting the student community. Is it Mary Beth? Is it, is it uh, two by two? They just put the school fees hoping that it will double. And when it double, they pay the school fees, they use the other part for their personal upkeep. Then let's go to stress. There's also stress among students, and this is a very big challenge among students. You go to class from morning till evening, every day, and at the end of the day, what do you eat? Just mere junk food. And after a month or two or three, you realize that you are growing slimmer and slimmer. Stress can cause a lot of health issues among students. And when these health issues begin to come in, you realize that it's either affecting your academic performance, it's either affecting your comprehension or your retentive memory, and all of that is a very big problem among students. Some students will even fall ill that maybe a week, two weeks, or even a whole stretch of a full semester, they are out of school. There's a whole lot of challenges within this university environment. Is it the government uh, 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 management policies? There are what I refer to as time bomb policy by management. Management make these policies without actually calculating how, it's, how it is on the students point of view. And at the end of the day, we have student management classes leading to protests here and there. And at the end of the day, you see that the academic calendar is obstructed. So there is a whole lot of challenges within the university environment that we cannot actually cover today. But the, the most interesting part of it is the post-university problem. Now, a parent and a student plan to, to go to send the world to school, you graduate to get a good job, and you will be able to take care of yourself. As a matter of fact, the National Police, uh, Policy on Education stated that the primary purpose of education is to ensure that the student or the graduate is able to be useful to himself and the society around. But what happened at the end of the day? Five years after graduation, you are still searching for a job. But why is this so? It is because of two factors. One, the curriculum, and two, the kind of lecturer that taught you. Now, I was questioning, and I'm also putting the question to the Nigerian, uh, Niger Nigerians out there. Why should professors be used to teach computer science? What do, lecture, what do professors know about computer that they are being used to teach computer science? Please, uh, all due regard to our professors, highly respected professors. I'm just trying to explain that if at the end of the day, the kind of content you give to these students are not worthy, are not weighty enough, the students cannot use the content. Those papers you are giving to them, year one, you say go and research uh, history of computer development from uh, beginning to the end. How is it going to help them when they graduate? Encourage them to have their own laptop, teach them the modern computer language, invite industry experts, people who are already having coding companies, they are coding for society, bring them in, let them teach 
how it is currently, so that the when the student graduate, in fact, from the IEM one, if the content you give to them is weighty, you realize that they are already making money by them for themselves. I have a staff who is from computer department. What he's doing is not as a result of what is taught in the class, but what they are learning outside the school environment. So they are able to develop a small business, code for people, and make earning. So year one, they are already paying their school fees. Year two, they are already paying their school fees. But what we have today, what you are taught in the university, five years after you are still searching for job, instead of using the content you learn to make wealth for yourself. So these are the a, a range of problems facing Nigerian students. So what you ask is the, the, the challenges facing Nigerian universities, not students. But I'm trying to tackle the problems that face the students on a personal note. And these are the stretch of problems from the pre-university environment to the post-university environment. Thank you. Okay, so talking about these challenges, I know that even in the post-university um, challenges, you mentioned the fact that the curriculum might not be great and then the um, lecturers that are teaching you as well. But I think I'll also add the fact that sometimes people go and study these things, but then there are no jobs available. So there's also the role of the government. But with everything that you've mentioned, that you've highlighted here, how do you think that these challenges are being addressed? Or how can people go about addressing these challenges, especially when if we're even starting with the pre-university? So do you think there should be a role um, in schools for guardians and counselors? Because I know that when I was much younger, um, we had those in schools whereby they tell you, okay, if this is your strength, if this is the area you want to if this is a career path you want to follow okay i think this should be what you should be studying so when it comes to you know having to choose the right course for you thinking of how much the fees would cost as well for each university so what are the what are the ways to actually mitigate all of these challenges that um you've highlighted here now the kind of course that students study not being useful in society I've always said it. There are so many courses within the Nigerian educational curriculum that should be scrapped, but our government, they are not helping. I think I made the, the, the I, I made a move in this regard for my department, but when you make that move, what you're only doing is creating enemies because there are lecturers who are taking these courses. And by the time these courses are scrapped, they have no job. For instance, uh, uh, typewriting. I don't know what Nigeria is still doing with typewriting. Okay, I know there are modern and advanced form of typewriter, uh, typewriters, but do Nigeria have the modern form? And are they teaching typewriting in the modern form? You are studying philosophy, you are paying school fees to so study sociology and their lives. What are you going to do with it when you graduate? Are you thinking about after you graduate or you are just thinking about having certificate? If you are thinking about having certificate, that is great. That is good for you. There is no question about that. But to me, I think every program should be focused on the intellectual part of it. Now, I did my, my master's in a university, but I have to quit because the, the content do not meet up with the intellectual requirements that I need. I needed the marketing knowledge to grow my business, but it happens that everybody around, everyone around are focused on certificates, which we, we, the certificate does not help the intellectual aspects. So if you are going for philosophy, sociology, and the rest, where do you want to work? If you already have a job and you just want the certificate to take that job, it is good for you. Or you don't have a job, you want to grow your life after graduation, then you have to be very careful about the kind of course that you accept. Now, how do we go about all of this? From the pre-university environment, a very good career, a very good career system should be established. Because while I was running the master's program, one of the uh, key issues I always contend in class is the absence of career programs in the pre-university environment. We have some career or guidance and counselors in the secondary school. Uh, some of them are functional, some of them are not. But once you leave secondary school, within that gap to the university, that is where career information is needed. Because this is where they choose their courses, they choose their subject uh, combination, they do a whole lot of stuff, university choice. So a, a career platform or a career system should be set up within this environment so that anyone that wants to write jump has to join this career platform or career system to enable them know what to do or how to go about it. 
that is for this environment. Then within the university system, I think the university can do more in the provision of more infrastructures, which are classes, more adequate lecturers. Like I've always recommended, I'm writing a book on the age of industry Hello, sir. The, the it is inviting industry experts, university and to come and teach the program of study how it is in the university, not using only lecturers, only professors who have known these things for quite a long time. Most of the things the lecturer teach are just paper teachings, paper teachings, and the only people these teachings are, are important for are those people coming to also use it as paper teaching. You are, you are writing your thesis, you need what somebody has written before to write your own. Your younger one is coming to write his thesis, he needs what you have written to. So it is The government invites industry experts to come to the university environment to help and teach. They can mix with the lecturers or they can mix with the professors, whichever they want to do it. But people who actually know what is happening in the industry. If that is done, when you leave the university to the industry, you already know what is happening there because we're taught to know the exact thing that has to happen. So this is a very basic aspect to structure the curriculum and the lecturers. Not if you structure the curriculum and leave the lecturers, how are the lecturers going to teach the new thing that you're bringing on? So we need a structure of both the lecturers and the curriculum. If you can do that, then there will be a match and it will go well. Then when you talk about the post-university environment, the, the, the fact remains that there is no way you can create jobs for everybody. So I don't even mention government. Immediately, there is a discourse and someone is mentioning government. I just say this person is not serious. So we have to look inward and push the government aside. How to, once the curriculum is real, is useful, is weighty, you see that 90% of students or graduates will start developing something for themselves based on what they have been taught. I know what I'm talking about. The level of marketing knowledge I have today, I didn't get it from the university. I got it from outside. And I know that if the content you are giving to that is given to you is weighty enough, you will find a way for yourself. You will develop a business and start taking care of yourself before you do. Hello, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, yes, so I, 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 I kind of agree with you because, I mean, I was having a conversation with someone last night and I was just talking about how schools in the U.S., schools in the U.K., from foundation, they're already teaching you presentation skills. They're already teaching you people management skills. They're teaching you things that can work for your everyday life, not just theory, not just things on paper. And because as kids, obviously, your brain is just forming. So you're soaking up everything you're learning. But here is in the university that they're expecting you to do certain dissertations, things that you should have started doing from foundation, from primary school and stuff like that. So I can understand what you were saying, especially when it comes to the curriculum and having something that is weighty, something that helps you as an individual. But finally, let's just, in one minute, let's just talk about the role of government, especially when it comes to security and welfare for these students. Because you expect that, okay, maybe the prices of, um, or rather the fees now for studying, accommodation, all of these things, how do you think that the government can help better when it comes to the security and welfare of students in Nigeria? The school and the student and their parents cannot take care of and mm -hmm. that is where you bring in uh, the aspect of uh, infrastructures aspect yeah. of security and general well-being uh, just uh, last week here there's a case in the niger that i investigated here where a student was killed as a result of argument over 150 naira and the community of the boy they were promising to come to the community of the university to come and retaliate or make statements that seem to be so and at the end what happened Government weighed in, invited both the community of the school and the community of the boy to a, a roundtable meeting, and they promised that the culprit will be brought to book within within few days. And truly, this morning I'm saying that the culprit have been apprehended. Mm. So this is how government come in to provide security for the school by ensuring that uh, the, the, the school environment or the, the education environment generally in Nigeria is safe enough to school resolving issues that can dip in into crisis before they actually get into crisis 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend decreasing school fees. That is not part of my understanding because things are costly generally, and I can only envisage that school fees will continue to increase. So what we can do as stakeholders, government, uh, 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 companies, is to keep on giving us scholarships to students, providing assistance to any student that we can give. I think that is better other than requesting the government to bring down the cost of school fees when the cost of management is actually skyrocketing. So in the next few couple of in the next years, school fees are going to increase and not decrease. So that should not be a call on the government to decrease school fees. But we can also all, 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 always agitate that the government should pay bursary or loans, yes, bursary loans, scholarships in this area to ameliorate uh, the, the, the plight of schooling in Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much. Um, again, I remember Michael J for coming. We want to say thank you for coming. It was um, it was amazing having to understand these challenges that students are facing. And hopefully the government can start to look at that and play their roles. And even parents, guardians as well, because clearly we all have a part to play in all of this. So from the pre-university stage to the university stage as having to choose the right course for you, knowing how much it will cost, going to study that, having a better curriculum um, and then coming out and finding jobs for yourself so we hope that um, all the stakeholders involved will try to put their hands in the plow and ensure that um, the university students the challenges are being mitigated and at the end of the day um, education is what helps us and if we have a if we have good education in Nigeria of course we're going to have better citizens citizens with good quality and which would help the nation at large we want to say thank you for coming. It was so lovely having a conversation with you on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're speaking with Ogene Yurame Michael Jay, a career specialist and the CEO.